All right, well, thank you everyone for, uh, for attending our session. I know it's during uh, lunchtime, but hopefully it will be worth your time. Um, let me just do a quick poll. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Mizba Mamoudi, uh, head of product marketing at uh, VMware, uh, responsible for our NFV infrastructure platform. Uh, also presenting with me today is uh, Ken Lee, who's also head of product marketing on the Dell EMC side for, uh, for the carriers. Um, so I just want to understand who here is a telco operator? Okay, a few of you guys. Okay, the rest of you guys are just spying on us. <laughs> um, anyway, so what I want to do today is essentially talk a little bit about the digital transformation around uh, what telcos really require and how OpenStack can help them as well, especially with uh, VMware and Dell EMC. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of go through kind of the market trends and some things around IoT and 5G, and then how you can actually deploy NFV infrastructure along with Dell EMC to actually provide a, a complete comprehensive uh, NFV solution for your different services. So everyone here is very much familiar with uh, the, the, the trends around the connected ecosystem. Um, everything from wearables, from your smart home with all the thermostats, uh, being able to stream audio, video, uh, the different business models that are coming in place with uh, smart pay, uh, being able to pay everything online or with your mobile device. Uh, and then there's also the networks and the clouds. And that really is, you know, moving from your private uh, clouds to, you know, telco NFV clouds and then also into the public clouds. And all of that is actually transforming the way that as an operator, you really need to focus in on in terms of how you're actually going to implement new infrastructure, new technologies to be able to support uh, a lot of this transformation. And then there's a trend around 5G networks. And traditionally, you know, everyone's talked about, you know, moving from 2G to 3G to 4G and now 5G. And, and it's really been around high-speed networks, right? You want to be able to have faster broadband speeds, and that's why people have been you know, migrating from 3G to 4G to 5G networks. And then there's also the high-performance networks where you have low latency, high availability. But then, really, 5G is more than just high-speed broadband. It's really around supporting uh, the Internet of Things. And I'll show you in the next couple of slides what I mean by that. But 5G, with deploying 5G, you're able to take advantage of this massive trend of billions of different connected devices going through the network, and how are you actually going to be able to support that? And that actually is done through network slicing. Uh, in my next slide, I'll show you what I mean by network slicing. Um, but then also, to move to 5G, you really need to do this virtually. Everything in your network has to be virtualized. And you, you know, looking at trends around you know, software-defined networking, and obviously NFV, this is what's actually going to enable you not just to be able to take advantage of the high broadband speeds, but then to be able to offer new innovative services for your customers. Um, and NFV is really going to help you deploy uh, the type of network infrastructure which allows you then to take advantage of all of these different services. So how many of you are familiar with uh, network slicing? Um, is that something that you guys are understand? A few people? OK. So the thing with 5G and, 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 and the, the standards are coming out right now, but what that allows you to do is actually carve out components of your network and address them for specific verticals. So for example, you, know, you look at the Internet of Things and you have devices, you have um, your thermostat. That actually requires a low bandwidth type of uh, environment where you're not necessarily looking at you know, these, these home devices and not taking up a lot of bandwidth on your network. But then you have things around virtual reality, um, uh, high bandwidth, high latency, or low latency type of environments. And you need to, again, carve out part of your network to be able to support that. Uh, and then you go to the bottom, you've got your connected car ecosystem. And if you want to offer a connected car type of service, you really require a low latency, highly available network uh, that really needs to respond right away. And the only way to do that is actually to carve out parts of your network and slice them up. And then for each network slice, you are to then 
assign different network resources for those. And so what I mean by that is for a low latency, highly available network, you actually require then the, the compute storage network and resources, and you want to make sure that that part of the network is rock solid. Whereas if it's a, another device or if it's you know, uh, connecting to your home network and low bandwidth, you don't necessarily need to apply a lot of different resources onto that part of the network slice. So network slicing is a huge advantage for 5G networks. And with VMware, with our vCloud NFV platform, uh, as well as with Dell EMC, we're able to then carve out those networks. And then uh, you can then uh, um, define them and actually customize them for each of the different uh, applications that you have here. So when you think about network infrastructure, there's five main areas that you have to take into consideration uh, when you're deploying NFVI. The first thing is really around service automation. So this is really around how do I actually deploy the different VNFs in my network, um, and how am I actually going to automate that provisioning of those different VNFs, right? Uh, think about 5G networks. Think about all the different services you're going to be deploying there they're actually going to be different VNFs. And you want to be able to deploy those very quickly, very efficiently. And you actually want to have policies based on you know, what to do for the deployments of those different VNFs. Now, when you look at the networking and security, you're looking at a multi-tenant environment where you have multiple applications serving multiple customers. And you want to make sure that each tenant that you actually deploy is secure not only from the outside from DDoS attacks, but then also inside as well. You know, you want to make sure that your network is secure from any rogue VNFs, for example, right? And it's contained within that network slice of yours. Now that you have your network deployed, you have to have to look at to operations management. This is kind of the day two uh, operations, which is, you know, once you have your VNFs deployed, what do you do now? How do you actually monitor your NFV infrastructure? How do you monitor the different VNFs in your, in your environment and kind of support that full lifecycle management, including upgrades, downgrades, patches, and, and, and other things? You need to have a carrier grade platform. Uh, same type of environment that you require for on your physical inside of the network has to be required on the network side as well. And then there's the broad partner ecosystem. Uh, so VMware actually has its NFV ecosystem uh, uh, certification program for the different VNFs. And we have over 35 different uh, VNFs certified on our program. And I'll get into a little bit about that in terms of what value that actually brings to you and your customers. So you take a look at the blue. And that is essentially what VMware is providing today which is the compute storage networking for your NFVI. Now, on the VIM, the Virtual Infrastructure Manager, we actually provide two versions. We have uh, vCloud Director, and then we also have a fully DEF Core compliant OpenStack version as well. And what that is, is we actually take the, the latest release of OpenStack, and we've actually pre-integrated, pre-tested it with our NFV infrastructure platform. So that ensures that it gives you the flexibility to use OpenStack, but then gives you the rock solid uh, capabilities that VMware provides on the compute storage and networking. And then we also have the analytics, the operations management with our vRealize operations, uh, vRealize log insight and network insight that gives you some of that day two capabilities. Um, from an orchestration, you know, ver VMware is very much open to different open standards bodies. So we support Tosca, OSM, OpenO, uh, amongst other open organizations. So that allows our customers to choose you know, what they want to be able to deploy for their management and orchestration and ensure that it works fully with VMware infrastructure. And just some of the solutions that we're deploying today uh, with our customers include virtual IMS, uh, CPE, uh, virtual Evolve Packet Core, SD-WAN, uh, virtual CDN, um, as well as connected car and IoT are some of the examples for our customers. So what I want to do now is actually step through a process of, you know, you, you want to deploy a service. What does it actually mean from an NFV infrastructure platform? And what do you actually need to think about 
when you're deploying the NFV infrastructure. So you have different services that you can deploy you know, in your data center or in the edge, and you want to deploy, for example, video service for a connected car. What you need to be able to ensure is that you can actually onboard the different VNFs, uh, you can actually create the different services based on your customer requirements, and you want to be able to make sure that you deploy it very quickly. The result of that, obviously, is you know, speeding out your and accelerating uh, faster time to market, ease of deployment, and you, be, you want to be able to automate the scale of your infrastructure. So when it comes down to what do you actually need then from an NFV infrastructure, you actually need to have the infrastructure in place where you can actually define the different policies to allocate the resources for your service creation. You know, we talked about the network slices and each one was going to require different resources based on what those network characteristics are going to be. So you actually want to have those predefined policies in place so that, for example, you want to deploy connected car, which has a uh, highly available low latency network. You want to be able to apply the compute storage networking resources appropriately for that service. Once you have that deployed, you actually want to be able to track the NFVI resource consumption. And what I mean by that is you want to be able to constantly uh, monitor how the NFVI resources are doing. You know, you might have uh, an uptick in adoption of that different service. And so from that perspective, you actually want to be able to then on demand increase your compute storage and networking resources based on the capacity. Uh, provide real time analytics and get some real time performance input in terms of how your actual infrastructure is actually de being deployed. Uh, automating the capacity optimization. Again, you want to be able to upgrade, downgrade based on real-time capacity demand. And you actually want to have that all automated, right? Because once it's all automated, then you can just let the network be. You can actually let the network track how the uh, consumption is going. And then you worry about your core business, which is adding new value added services for your customers. Then, of course, uh, VMware is very much open to um, using open standards. So we actually leverage uh, Tosca blueprints for onboarding. We use Yang, NetConf, uh, all of those you know, easy to use blueprints where we can actually deploy new service creation very easily using our NFV infrastructure. So because this is an OpenStack conference, we have to show you a couple of slides that sh uh, show exactly how VMware uses OpenStack and leverages OpenStack to actually deploy uh, different services. Uh, actually, in our booth, we've got uh, a couple of um, uh, demos which actually goes through the whole process of onboarding different services for a virtual IMS connected car leveraging uh, OpenStack. And you can see here uh, on the right-hand side is the uh, network topology of a full deployment. And in this case, it's actually a virtual IMS deployment where you have your PS PCs, SCFs, uh, your SBCs, um, your HSS devices being configured, leveraging our NFV infrastructure platform. OK, so now that you have your service deployed, now you actually want to look at what can it do in terms of expanding the services uh, and doing things around network slicing. And so I've got this example here where on the bottom, you actually have your video services deployed, and now you actually want to deploy navigation and emergency services for a connected car, for example. You know, your customers as an operator could be like a Tesla, it could be a Chevrolet, uh, BMW, and you want to deploy these services for those customers. Now, each service here, your video service, your navigation service, your emergency service, as I mentioned, all of them have different network characteristics, um, and they all have to be treated separately. And so with a secure multi-tenant environment, you are able to separate those services into verticals and then apply different network characteristics. So for example, emergency calling, you need to ensure that it's highly available, highly reliable, it's on all the time. Whereas if it's a video service, um, sure, it has to be available most of the time, but if there is any jitters or if there's any delay or latency, you can afford that, right? People will be more forgiving if their video doesn't download in the car versus if they actually pressed uh, an emergency service button from their car. So you need to be able to customize the different services, 
um, and actually deploy your network resources based on the different service that you have. So what does that mean from an NFV infrastructure platform? Uh, first of all, you need to be able to segment the different virtual resource pools into isolated network slices. Uh, you need to define those different security policies based on the different service deployments that you have. Um, providing the predefined SLAs. So again, for your emergency calling service, you actually want to have different SLAs required, and you want to be able to customize that based on you know, the different compute storage networking resources that are required. And then of course, security is paramount, uh, especially when you're looking at things around the Internet of Things where security uh, is still not 100%. And with this, our platform, we actually provide security uh, in both directions, both you know, north-south between the infrastructure, the VNF, and the management and orchestration system. And then we also provide um, security across east-west traffic as well between the different virtual mach machines and the different shared resources. Uh, and this is paramount as well because, for example, you may act actually have security uh, secure from outside DDoS attacks, but then you need to also make sure that within that slice itself as it actually contains. So, for example, if a VNF uh, does become impacted by a security attack, you want to make sure that that security, you know, that attack and that breach is contained within that slice and does not propagate, you know, east-west. And with our solutions, with you know NSX, that actually provides you that capability to provide that secure multi-tenant environment. And here we actually show a couple of screenshots. Uh, the actual demos are in our booth, but we actually show what, right here um, how the configuration is done using uh, vCenter, which is our VMware environment, to actually go ahead and define the different security policies for each of your different virtual machines. And here on the right-hand side, we're actually showing where we're actually securing the different services at the perimeter as well as at the edge itself of the network. So now we've talked about service deployment, we've talked about adding services and network slicing. So you have all that in place. The third biggest thing is really around operations management. And this, I think, is key and fundamental to your network deployments. And what I mean by operations management is you really, once you have your network deployed, you have to have real-time analytics feedback in terms of what's the performance and capacity of my network like? Um, what's the health of my network? Are there any VNFs down that are service impacting and I should be alerted of? Uh, with VMware and our suite of operations management products, we're able to give you like a complete dashboard, which gives you the health, efficiency, and risks of your entire network. Proactive analytics. So this again learns uh, what's going on in your network and is actually able to then predict you know, if there is going to be an uptick in a specific service or that you're starting to gain a lot of subscribers, that's going to actually tell you then to, to add more compute storage networking resources so that your infrastructure can actually handle the additional subscribers in your network. We provide vRealize Log Insight that actually provides you pinpoint information around what exactly is uh, wrong. If there is a fault, you know, you can actually provide that information about where exactly that fault is through logs. Uh, and then we also have Re-Realized Network Insight, which actually provides uh, overlay, uh, an underlay network information around the actual networks itself through NSX, and it gives you, again, detailed information around the network connectivity of your network. And it's important that you have this operations management across multiple tiers. So it's not just, again, on the infrastructure, which is the hypervisor and operating system, but we're actually then looking at it from a, from a networking perspective, um, as well as on the services side as well. So, you know, getting the health of your different VNFs. And then, you know, some of our operators, they've actually deployed, and it's something that's very interesting, and, and, and it's kind of, you know, where the market is heading which is a lot of operators have essentially three different clouds, right? You know, you've got your telco IT cloud, and you want to virtualize that. You then also have your NFV cloud, and you've got all your VNFs, and you want to virtualize that. 
Now, a lot of operators are then looking into what can I do around management, ma managed cloud or a public cloud? And how do I actually deploy VMs across all of those clouds, but then also provide the operations management across all of those? And that's where VMware's cross-cloud architecture comes into place, which is essentially we give you the ability to provide the, the management, the automation, uh, security, any of the policies across multiple clouds that you're deploying. For example, we actually have a customer um, in the Middle East that's doing exactly this, which is they have their, their IT environment and they virtualize that. Uh, they actually have their telco or their NFV environment and they're deploying virtual IMS services and they want to use the same VMware infrastructure, the NFV infrastructure, to actually then move that into the cloud as well and be able to manage across all three clouds. And this becomes very important for you to be able to scale out into the different clouds and have a consistent management user experience uh, across all of those different clouds in a multi-tenant environment. So I touched upon the partner ecosystem. Uh, so VMware has a NFV certification program. And what that certification program does is we actually bring on different VNF vendors into our lab and we have a full comprehensive certification testing program in place. And as an operator, why this is important for you is because you can then be, you can rest assured that any of these different VNFs that we have here, um, and we're, we're updating this on a daily basis, but all of these are going to be certified on NFV infrastructure. And that gives you then the peace of mind that everything works as is. Um, we've actually had it where operators are demanding these VNFs, the, the, the vendors, to actually have them certified before they even go to RFP. Um, and then obviously we have the management and orchestration vendors on our right hand side. Uh, for example, Cloudify, Amdocs, they all work with our NFV infrastructure platform as well as some of the system integrators here. So that gives you a broad overview of the NFV infrastructure platform. Uh, so now I'm going to have Ken Lee come up and talk a little bit about uh, the Dell EMC platform and how that actually integrates. Thanks, Mr. All right, so let me spend the next 15 minutes or so in uh, talking about how Dell EMC works with VMware to provide service providers a unified cloud infrastructure platform, optimized, validated, and pre-configured for NFV workloads. So what we look at is how can we help service providers modernize the infrastructure that you already have to service multiple types of workloads, right? And I think it's obvious that NFV is one type of workload that operators have, but you have other lines of business with other types of workloads. And so what we look at is if you're a communication service provider or a cloud provider, managed hosting, a web tech, or all of the above, there are some key attributes that you need to manage and automate and, and deliver those workloads to different uh, customers, whether they're enterprises or uh, consumers, right? And so the key attributes that a modern, what we call a modern service provider is the ability to offer NFE, obviously, but also have a cloud native infrastructure, containerizing some of these workloads, managing multiple clouds on behalf of enterprises. Ms. Bell alluded to this, right? Um, you know, enterprises are looking at not just the vendor lock-in just to AWS or one uh, Azure, but they're managing increasingly multiple public clouds and workloads across them. Hybrid cloud management, workloads on-premise as well as off-premise. And then, of course, the DevOps model of app dev. So the way we work with VMware is obviously Dell EMC provides a core hardware infrastructure platform across compute storage and networking. But what makes it a cloud infrastructure platform is a software layer, right? So um, a lot of, um, obviously, in the enterprise IT, virtualization is something that a lot of uh, customers already have. But increasingly in the service provider market, virtualizing network functions is a key um, attribute that they need to have. Orchestrating that, automating that, right? Providing real-time analytics into the workloads that you've automated and, and orchestrating. And then securing that, and of course, the ability to offer that increasingly in a cloud-native environment, containerizing the workloads that you have. 
And so if you're a, a managed hosting provider, the ability to host workloads that are just not running on VMs or on containers is increasingly a need that they have, right? And also ability to have analytics across, increasingly if you're bringing IoT uh, devices into your network, and Ms. Ba talked about how 5G is gonna be uh, uh, facilitating that. As Dell, EMC, and VMware, we wanna provide the underlying hardware and the software to service multiple workloads, regardless of the type of service provider that, that you may be or looking to work with, right? Specific to NFV, and again, I think that um, CSPs on, are on a journey uh, to virtualize their core infrastructure and their network functions, right? And so we work with multiple VNF partners that VMware has certified, and the use cases are at the top, right? VPC, VIMS, VCP, SD-WAN, these are the common set of uh, network functions that are being virtualized. And for you know, compute virtualization, storage virtualization, and network virtualization, we work very closely with VMware to provide those uh, assets uh, to service providers, right? And then in terms of orchestrating that virtual infrastructure is clearly uh, VIO and vCloud Director. And I think that this is very important because service providers want choice, and working with VMware, we're able to provide that choice, right? Not only at the Vim layer, but also at specifically at the VNF layer, right? And then when it comes to operations management, I think this is a point that Ms. Ba made is that operationalizing NFV is what's happening today. Right? As Dell EMC, we wanna focus on helping service providers operationalize and start to turn and monetize the NFV deployments that they're having, right? And so what we wanna focus on is real, you know, working with um, VMware's V Realize Suite, as well as Dell EMC assets to help operationalize the VNF workloads that are going into production. And there's a, you know, the way Dell EMC delivers these solutions working with VMware is sort of these three go-to-market models. There's a lot of service providers who have the R&D uh, resources to do it yourself. That's the open ecosystem approach, right? You pick Dell EMC hardware, you pick the workloads at the top, and you pick the infrastructure platform of your choice. And obviously that could be VIO or, or uh, vCloud Director, and you could pick whatever workloads that you wanna put on top of that and engineer that yourself. So that's sort of the open ecosystem approach. Certain service providers are like, well, you know what? I don't wanna do all of that integration myself. Why don't you come to the table with the infrastructure software and the hardware pre-bundled, pre-validated, pre-certified, optimized for certain workloads? And it, it could be a, a whole slew of VNFs that necessarily it's up to you, right? The VNFs that certain Asian operators want are very different than, say, certain uh, Latin American operators want versus say in, in the Americas. So we wanna make sure that the operators have choice in terms of what VNFs they choose, but we can supply the core infrastructure platform, software and hardware pre-bundled out of the box from Dell EMC and VMware. And that's sort of the validated systems approach. And the third approach is that, let's say that you want the actual set of VNFs pre-certified together with the infrastructure hardware and the software, right, out of the gate out of the box, and that's the reference architecture approach that we have. We work with currently three sets of VNF suppliers, but again, because VMware has a broad ecosystem of NFV partners, we actually can work with those as well to provide reference architectures if that is the um, VNF supplier of your choice, right? So again, three approaches, and it's about choice. It's about um, sort of an open ecosystem approach to how you want to operationalize NFV, depending on where you are in the journey towards NFV. All right, well, thank you very much. That's all the <laughs> slides I have for Dell EMC. Um, if you have any questions for Ms. Ba or myself. Okay, great. Ms. Ba, do you have any uh, last comments? Nope. Okay. All right, thanks very much, guys, for taking time in your lunch hour. Thank and you. I appreciate it.